What's going on guys? So today we're looking at the Maxpedition Falcon 2. Now this is actually one of their older packs that I don't believe is still in production that have actually come up with the Falcon 3 recently. Um, now, even though this product's no longer in production, you're still gonna see a lot of them on the market and still for sale readily available. And hey, you may even get lucky, you might find one on clearance sale. Now, I've had this bag for probably about two and a half years now, taking it hiking, camping, you name it. I've done a lot with this bag. And it looks brand new. Now, part of that is due to the fact that it is just built like an absolute tank. Also, one thing about the material is they actually have a very unique coating on there. So I'm not sure what specifically about it actually works so well, but it is a form of a polyurethane coating that actually makes it very water and moisture resistant. So anytime you spill something on there, if you take it out in the rain, all that moisture just beads up, falls right off like a freshly waxed car. Now that's part of the reason that it looks so clean, like it honestly has never been absolutely used whatsoever. But with that said, this thing has seen a lot of use, a lot of time in the woods, and I'm still amazed how it looks so good after all of that. Now, I will say, I'm a fairly tall guy, a little over six feet, and one of the biggest issues I've had with this pack is the location and design of the belt strap. So, instead of hitting at the top of your hips like a lot of these packs do, this one actually hits above your uh, waistline, and it works great for keeping the back stable and it's not gonna bounce around on you much, but it doesn't do much to keep the weight on your hips as opposed to on your shoulders. But fortunately, it's a fairly small bag that fits between your shoulder blades, so you're not gonna be carrying a ton of weight in this to, in the first place. And generally speaking, the size and design pack I like for using up to around 20 to 25 pounds, so you don't really need a very durable waist belt at that point. Once you get up around 30, 35 pounds, that's where you really want to start having something with an internal frame, something that has a good solid waist belt and is going to distribute that weight a little better. But for a bag of this size, you don't really need much of that. Now, starting on the outside, one thing you're going to see is a couple things, I've, or two things you'll see is some things I've added. First, we have the Maxpedition bottle opener, which is actually pretty cheap online and they actually work really good. So if you do want to have something an easy way to open a bottle up, it actually works really well and it knocks right into the uh, PALS webbing on the outside of the pack. I mounted it on the upper outer pouch here, but you can literally mount that anywhere on a pack or on a, um, on a vest, things like that, anywhere you have PALS webbing. Additionally, I mounted a knife up on the side here. Uh, in my area, it's not a big deal to have a knife visible. Most people don't really care if they see something, especially if you're hiking around the woods. Uh, but not only that, it's, it matches very well. This is a K-Bar Becker BK-17. So just to show you the knife real quick. I'll do a review on this guy later on. But that always stays in the side of the pack here. Um, and keeps nice and out of the way. The other change that I have made in the pack that you're not going to notice is inside the hydration pouch. So on the back here, if you open this up, there's a spot to hold up to a 100 ounce water bladder. And personally, I'm not a big fan of using water bladders when I hike. I personally would rather have like a Nalgene bottle or a clean canteen, things like that. So I never really use this pouch. Now it does have some Velcro inside there, so you can actually use it to have a uh, concealed carry holster in there. But again, I'm not a big fan of off-body carry, so it's not really usable to me. And one thing I find when I pack up a pack is I don't really like to have to deal with making sure my stuff's aligned straight and make sure that nothing's jabbing me in the back. So what I was actually able to do was I made a bit of a, um, almost like an internal frame for this pack. Now what this actually is, it's a piece of poly uh, or PVC and I actually cut this out of a road case for a uh, fast fold projector screen. Now, this is something I doubt many people have access to, but honestly, any thick piece of malleable plastic will actually work very well for this. This particular piece is fairly heavy duty and thick, about an eighth of an inch deep, and it doesn't really weigh more than a couple ounces. So personally, I thought this was a great material to use. Cut it to fit, uh, ground the sides down, make sure there's no sharp edges on the corners, and then just slip that inside the back of the pack. Now what that does is it does two things for you. Make sure you don't catch the side of the PALS webbing there. 
Now, it's not only going to give you a nice flat back, but if anything is sharp poking through the back of the back, it's not gonna jab into you, it's gonna make things a little more comfortable if you don't pack it the most cautiously, to say the least. But also, it's going to serve as a little bit of an internal frame to help keep things a little more rigid and a little more comfortable over a longer period of time. Now, that's something that I personally added, but I don't think it's something that most people will ever need to do. The reason being is, it adds a little bit of uh, extra uniqueness to this pack. It makes it my own, but it's something that you can definitely do without. And if you're not the type of person that wants to modify their gear like I am, you can definitely do without. It's not going to be a big deal to not have that. I've carried this many times when it didn't have that, and I've carried it many times when it did. I like it a little better when it does have the internal frame added that I made for it. But frankly, I have no complaints about it when it doesn't. Now, if you look down bottom here, you do have these two straps. A lot of people would think that these are going to be great to throw like a sleeping bag or sleep system in there, but that's about as big as they get. So yeah, you can get two full size hands in there, but it's not quite big enough of a area to hold a full size sleeping bag. Now that's not a big deal in my book because a pack this small isn't really geared towards uh, an overnight bag. Um, now a lot of guys will disagree with me on that and this could be a two or three day bag for them. But for me, it's more of a, I'm going on five, six hours hiking, and I want to have a little bit of food, water, and gear with me. Uh, if I'm going for an overnight, I'm going to have a much larger pack, and have a lot, much more gear, and have a bag that's going to have a little more weight carrying capacity. But you could definitely push this bag a little further than I do, and use it as a uh, once two night bag without an issue. But what I have seen a lot of guys use this for is actually to mount to a second Maxpedition pack. Uh, now, as I mentioned before, the waist belt does not really land on your waist. It lands more of the middle of your stomach. Now, that's been a big complaint from a lot of guys, especially those that are taller like myself. What I've seen many people do, and I think I saw this first on uh, Blade Forms, is they'll take the Proteus VersaPack and put it right below here. So they'll actually run this webbing through the uh, Proteus and use the Proteus waist belt as their waist belt for the Falcon 2. And that's going to work great because it's not only give you a little extra capacity for storage, but it's also going to take a lot more of that weight from the uh, shoulder straps and put it onto your hips. Now for me, I've yet to do that because once I'm stepping up into that extra capacity, I'm usually going to go for a slightly larger pack. But what's cool about that, and this is actually something that's really cool about Maxpedition, is they listen to their customers. Now, once you've done that modification or that addition to this pack, you get something that's very similar to a fairly new product from Maxpedition, the Gur Falcon. Now, basically what the new Gur Falcon is, is it looks like a Falcon 2 with a Proteus VersaPack mounted to the bottom. Now, they did also add an internal frame to it. They added the uh, plastic back frame to it. And it basically makes the new pack into what everyone tried to modify the Falcon 2 into. And that's one thing I've found very cool about Maxpedition is they do listen to their customers they pay attention to forums, they pay attention to YouTube videos. And because of that, they're making their products what their customers actually want. So a lot of respect goes to Maxpedition for that reason alone. Now, to give you an idea of what can actually fit into bag the size, uh, I'm gonna just go through some of the crap I have in here just to show you how much really fits in here. Now, on the outside, there's something that's kinda neat that uh, not many other bags have, is this piece right here. Now, what this does is it allows you to lock your zipper is shut. Yeah, you get a little bit of um, potential to open there, but you can't open it that far. And that's great if you're gonna be using this in the city a lot, uh, because say you're on the subway, someone wants to seal the shit out of your bag, they're not gonna be able to do it very discreetly. That can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how you wanna look at it. But let's take a look inside and get going here. So on the sides, you do have two buckles on both sides. Once you open those up, you actually can open the zipper the entire length of the bag on the first main pouch. Now that's going to allow you to have a lot of space. You can get two full-size water bottles. I like using either a clean canteen or a Nalgene bottle with a uh, cook pot on the bottom. Because with that, you have a way to store water, but you also have a way to cook. A little bit of um, freeze-dried food in there. Now this is actually something I've done that uh, I found a lot of good use for is this is one of those miniature, I think it's a couple ounce, maybe four ounce Nalgene bottle, but it's actually containing a um, powdered milk substitute. 
uh, I forget what brand, I think it's just Coffee Mate or something like that, because if you're like me, you can't go without coffee very long. And frankly, I like having a little bit of milk in my coffee. Now to make sure you have that to go with it, you wanna make sure you do have some coffee bags, which I believe Folgers and a couple other brands actually make these little bags that actually look like a tea bag, but they're coffee. And these are awesome if you're out on the trail, you're out in the woods, just boil a little bit of water, toss one of those in there, and then you have some coffee. And that is actually what I like to use the inside pouch on here for. It's a little zippered mesh pouch. It's great for storing coffee, and also I got some gloves in there as well, just keep them out of the way, keep things organized. Bottom to bottom of the pack here, we got another uh, mesh pouch, which I personally don't have much use for. Actually, I take that back, I got another coffee pack in there. <laughs> I think you can see a theme here. Also have a sweatshirt, some extra clothes at the bottom, and just keep things nice and packed so you have most of the weight with the water up at the top near your shoulders, and more of the lightweight padding at the bottom being the clothing. And that's gonna work great to help distribute the weight, keep things comfortable for a longer period of time. Uh, another great thing about the Maxpedition packs is they are running YKK zippers. So they're very durable, they are gonna um, retain water very well, and they're not gonna break very easily on you. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss this crap back in here and then start moving into a front pouch. So now that we've seen the main pouch, we can take a look into the front pouches. Now this one is going to be a lot smaller and as you'll notice on the side, it does not open the entire length of the bag. Now this is going to be stuff you're gonna use a little less often. We actually get one of those uh, Mylar tarps in here, bunch of um, the protein shakes, toilet paper because who in the right mind goes into woods without some, and then just some random crap I've tossed in here, some pro power bars and this is something cool I picked up uh, at a gun show a while back. It's a SOL scout kit. So you actually have a uh, Mylar blanket, mini fishing kit, fire sparker, uh, some quick tinder, a compass, duct tape, you get a whistle back there as well. Just a great little setup inside a miniature dry bag. So you got a decent little survival kit in there and it doesn't take up much space and it's fairly cheap. Then as we move to the front of the bag, we have two smaller pouches that are gonna be great for stuff you wanna have quick access to from the outside. Now this one is going to be a lot of things I use a lot on the trails, so like Purell, great for washing your hands and fire starting. And we have some uh, smaller stuff, you got a lighter, you got some um, one of the old film canisters filled with Vaseline and cotton, which is my personal preferred fire starter. Then you got some smaller stuff, you got a uh, light my fire ferro rod, which is cool because this one actually has a whistle built in as well. And then you just have some generic small stuff tossed in there as well. But that's going to be great for stuff you want to have quick access to and you don't want to have just buried in the bottom of a pack somewhere. And then finally, we have the front, bottom, out, exterior pouch. Now I don't really keep much in this one, but I do keep a decent sized first aid kit. Now within this, I, do, I did add uh, some things like quick clot. Uh, I do like to have a tourniquet in there as well. And then just some generic first aid stuff. Also tossed a Frontier water filter in here. This one's just one of those cheapo, like $15 AAA kits from Amazon. But if you add a little bit to it, toss a little extra money into it, it actually has a nice case and keep things fairly compact. You can have a solid kit once you get finished. So that's it for the Falcon 2 from Maxpedition. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comment section below.